<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. There's a ton of stuff to go over. So let's just jump right in, shall we? So as you may have noticed that the market is taking quite a little bit of a pullback. Some people will say uh, they, won't, they won't call it a crash. This is a healthy thing, right? But uh, the, the question has to be asked, why? I mean, we just had uh, some pretty good reports as far as earnings, NVIDIA, S&P 500, and NASDAQ are up. And we've seen a lot of positive news. So what gives? Because right now we're looking at over 24 hours, Bitcoin's down 5%. That's quite a bit. And that's not like a, just a regular healthy pullback, but it is crypto. So we do the call that a Wednesday. Ethereum's down, Solana's down 7.5%, XRP, Doge. Toncoin is up 2%, but it's down 16 for the seven days. Look, nothing's going to make sense for in a bit. I'm going to, I'm going to explain why. So the question you might have to yourself, and this actually happened last night. I was just uh, scrolling through X and I thought to myself, why is there such a big dip in the market? Well, there's a couple of reasons. It's because the market is straight up irrational. And uh, when things happen, either news dictates some type of flow or whales use the news to move things and say, ah, it's because of that news piece. But here's what we know may have contributed to a little bit of the slump of the price action. Number one, there was uh, apparently Ukrainians struck back to the uh, Russian oil depot or to a section of a Russian oil depot. And that was a direct uh, war response for, from Ukraine. So when you have more escalation of wars, the markets get really spooked. And when they get spooked, then of course, people start to sell off and go their own way. So there's that piece. Then also, if you took a look at the ETF flows from yesterday, you might notice this big, long net outflows. And it looks like ARC, Kathy Wood's ARC just dumped a bunch of their Bitcoin ETF, which is fine. Everybody's got a, got a choice to, uh, to sell when they want to, but it was substantial, negative 17, 17 Bitcoin or so. And then of course, Grayscale does its thing. And when people hear about negative outflows, that's awful. And they just panic and they start selling. But look at this. We just crossed over the net positive flows of Bitcoin on August 23rd. And that flow took us from 304.3 to 302,000. It never astounds me just how just how people are like, oh, got to flow, got to got to sell, because there's just some craziness going on. So we have that, and then of course, the reason for the thumbnail and title today is Gary strikes again, which is the SEC decides. You know what? We think that these investment contracts it doesn't just stop with digital assets for cryptocurrencies. We're gonna go for the whole spectrum of digital assets and we're going to figure out that NFTs are now investment contracts going from there. So this was a post from Devin Finzer. Uh, Devin is the co-founder and CEO of OpenSea. And he says, OpenSea has received a Wells notice from the SEC threatening to sue us. So just to make this 100% clear, they're not sued yet, but when you get a Wells notice, they're saying, we are going to sue you. They believe the NFTs on our platform are securities. We're shocked the SEC would do this. Crypto have long been the crosshairs of the SEC and companies like Coinbase, Uniswap, Robinhood, Kraken and Consensus have been fighting forever. And the only ones that, not the only ones, but it seems like Gary continues to take these loss after loss after loss. And it doesn't matter because he has no shortage of funding. The problem with these organizations and these companies that they drag into court is they know that even if they lose, they will win because it takes time and money. And what did we just talk about investors? They get spooked. So when the SEC sues you, oh, it's gotta be bad. And they get out of there and the SEC is responsible for so much detrimental effects in the crypto and digital asset space that they are essentially to my, my mind, enemy number one for what they're doing. I do not think that Gary is here trying to be the most magnanimous person to do this on, on just free will. He's doing it for a specific reason. I believe it's dictated by the current administration. I believe it's actually doing that to either slow down or absolutely crush crypto and digital assets. And he's doing a fantastic job. And guess what? He will never run out of money because it's coming from you. It's coming from me. It's coming from all the taxpayers that are out there. And that will just keep going until he is removed. Let me step down from my soapbox. I got a little high on that one. So that's what's happening. And... Uh, Kevin Devin says it pretty well. He says, 
NFTs are fundamentally creative goods. They are art, collectibles, video game items, domain names, event tickets, and more. We should not regulate digital art in the same way we regulate collateralized debt obligations. And he talks about how for the smaller type of creators and the smaller type of uh, uh, NFTs that have been created by smaller organizations, it's going to be very difficult for them to fight that fight. And they're going to get wiped out. And that's pretty much what the SEC does. So congratulations, Gary. You're doing a great job of winning by losing. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. But cooler heads do prevail, and they understand, and they give their timely wisdom. This is uh, Brian Contents. He is the former CFTC head. And he says, news of the open sea receiving a Wells notice shows plain and simple that the current SEC's crusade against the crypto industry continues unabated. This is in contrast to what Vice President Harris said two weeks ago, announcing her economic agenda, where she states, I will focus on cutting the list bureaucracy and, and, and unnecessary, unnecessary regulatory red tape and encouraging, applause, and encouraging innovative tech while protecting consumers and creating a stable business environment with consistent and transparent <laughs> rules of the road. Transparent rules of the road. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to go on. I, I usually don't get this. Uh, I cannot believe this is happening. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Uh, there is some good news, though. I mean, somewhat. Um, Telegram founder Pavlov Durov, or Pavel. I was going to call him Pavlov. Pavel Durov uh, has been released from prison, and people are saying he's free. He's not free. Telegram founder Pavel Durov transferred from police custody to the court. So he went from, from court or from the police custody, and then now he's going to face charges. So Pavel exited the anti-fraud office outside Paris in what appeared to be a police vehicle on Wednesday afternoon. So people were like, hey, he's free. No, he went right to the courthouse. The Paris prosecutor's office said he would now face initial questioning and possible indictment at a court in the French capital. And it gets worse for Tun. So as a reminder, Telegram is not Tun. Telegram is a messaging app that is encrypted if you so choose to, to use it that way. Tun, or the open network, is a the cryptocurrency and digital asset token that was independently created outside of Telegram. Remember, Telegram already got busted by the SEC. I think it was called Gems back then, and they had to, they had to pay back all their investors and lost, uh, well, I think that's over billions and billions of dollars. So on top of what happened with, with Pavel being arrested, the Tun blockchain shut down yesterday. Now, I will just uh, preface it with this. Yes, I'm big on Tun. I like Tun. I like the, how there's a synergy between Tun and Telegram, lots of users. One out of eight people essentially are using that because they've got roughly, roughly a billion users. However, you have to call things out when things aren't working. And I'm not going to hide behind it. This is not the ideal situation. This is honestly one of the worser situations. You have one job as a blockchain, and that is to stay up. And if you cannot stay up as a blockchain, you are not a blockchain. You are not decentralized, and you have major, major problems. And you need to fix that. So this is what happened. Uh, just last night, <clears throat> and uh, this on the tweet, it was down. The ton blockchain did not produce a block for four hours. And actually, if we take a look at ton viewer, <laughs> let me refresh this. You can see that it was actually not four hours. It was seven hours. Straight up, no blocks whatsoever. We'll figure out what actually happened, but as of right now, it just wasn't working. And I'm hearing reports that it is down again. So, yes, I'm big on ton. Yes, I like ton, but uh, you got to call a spade a spade, and it's sucking right now. And that's just the truth. So that's an issue. But again, going back to the theme of the irrationalities of the markets, well, actually, no, two things. First of all, don't get too uppity, Solana. Just remember, but they're still in beta. So that's it. And before anybody goes, ah, Rob's a Solana hater. I have way more Solana than I do ton. I just make fun of these things because to me it is funny. Would I like it to be all perfect? Yes. But do I have to call it out? Absolutely. 
I love this little meme here, top blockchains. Tons not working. And then Solana saying, eh, first time. Anyhow. But irrationality of markets, as a reminder, yesterday there was a, a mini app uh, called Dogs Journey or Lost Dogs. And they did an airdrop for their token dogs. And within the airdrop time frame, between six, 12 hours or so, whatever else, else it was, uh, and even though the ton blockchain was down, they still managed to get into the top 100 by market cap. <laughs> So it's worth roughly, I don't know, $800 million now for a token for a Web3 game that quite honestly, I mean, I don't know if it's addicting, but it was it was somewhat interesting, but I, don't, I wouldn't say it's an $800 million game, but hey, here we are. And that's the irrationalities in the market. And you can take a look at it. Dogs, I believe, is number 91 as it stands, may fluctuate as time goes on. So that's all weird, um, honestly, odd news. Let's talk a little bit about some positive. Cardano. So Cardano, it looks like they're going through for a yet another hard fork. And this is a uh, this is put out by Legendary Jungle Inc. And I wanted to share this with everybody. This is about, this is actually about nine minutes. I linked in the description. You can check it out or just follow Jungle Inc. on, on X and you'll find it. And uh, take a listen to the first 48 seconds to what Charles is talking about. I got to tell you, it makes me quite uh, quite bullish on what is being said here. Let me Make sure you can hear this correctly. And there we are. Take a listen to what Charles has to say. It's pretty good. 48 seconds. Cardano will hard fork. We've been here before. We've done this before. We did it with Vossel. You know, we uh, we did it with uh, Alonso. We did it with Shelly. Uh, we've done it many eras uh, before. But this is the most consequential because... This unlocks the most advanced governance stack in the history of the cryptocurrency industry. It combines concepts like liquid democracy with a constitutional republic. It enables and allows strong institutions to be able to parse and work through things like a budget, a roadmap, and unlocks the crown jewel of Cardano, the sovereign wealth fund that is 1.5 billion ADA valued at almost $600 million at today's prices at the all-time high, $4.5 billion. Wow. Yeah. So <clears throat> take a listen to that, uh, the whole thing. It's about uh, 10 minutes or so. So congratulations to all the Cardano holders. That will, I would be one of those. Uh, I think things are going in the right direction for them. Let's see if they can actually hold on. I got to tell you, the Rare Evo event was uh, quite eye-opening. So that is good. And of course, as all these different chains start to shutter and fall apart, Cardano holders will say, see, we told you this decentralization was the way and it was a safer way. And uh, it's just the best thing out there. Well, just like I told Solana, not so fast, not so fast, Cardano. Do not forget active addresses. If I compare Solana ton and Cardano, it's not looking too hot. Just gonna let you guys know. Cardano has 23,000 active addresses. Ton is uh, half a million and Solana has 1.7 million. Daily transactions, Cardano's got 36,000. Ton is 1.5 million and Solana is 33.9 million. But people say, but Rob, EUTXO, don't forget that, EUTXO, where there's multiple, multiple transactions within the block itself. I understand that. But if you add up all those, it still doesn't equal anything close to what those two are doing. TVL, same thing. DEX trading volumes, abysmal. And then fees, which I got to be honest with you, you don't really want it to be high, but uh, that's revenue. That's what you want to see. Cardano fees, $3,000. Ton 191,000 and Solana, as cheap as it is, still generates almost a million a, a day, 816,000. So I don't want to delve too into it. Let's just, can we just agree that there is no perfect chain out there? That there's no chain that is straight up awesome and can do everything? I think the future is multi-chain. That's all I wanted to bring to it, your attention. And if you'd like to do your own research, app.artemis.xyz, links in the description. You can check it out for yourself and take a look at all the different information that's out there. So, of course, tell me where I'm wrong in the comment section. But let's get to a little good stuff, and then we'll get to the Q&A after this. This was a post from Adam Taggart, and he's the host of Wealthion. It's a great channel, uh, really good stuff. And he, he makes a, a pretty good assessment. He's like, look, 
The key question you're going to start to hear as soon as this, once the Fed starts cutting rates, and they're going to in September, and yields on T-bills and money market funds start coming down, where will those trillions go next? Because as the T-bills start coming down in treasuries, why would people invest more into those too? They have to find a home somewhere. So I just, of course, over on Wealthion, they're going to be more of a traditional finance focus, but just kind of imagine, let that, let that imagination run wild of where you think some of that of those funds could go to trillions of dollars. Obviously, it's not all going to crypto. Don't get crazy. But I see it's a more of a liquidity issue, and that's good for us. And then also, <laughs> piggybacking on the Russian news, this is an interesting, I don't, I don't know if you want to take this as positive or negative, but Russia will now use a national payment card system to exchange between rubles and crypto on September 1st, 2024. Isn't that crazy? The trial is successful. The Moscow exchange and the St. Petersburg's currency exchange may be allowed to establish crypto platforms. Giga bullish. I'm not going to sit here and celebrate Vladimir Putin. I mean, come on. But at least he got one thing right. So good for him. And then lastly, a shout out to everybody in Puerto Rico for doing their job, which was orange pilling Donald Trump. And this is a great story. This is from CNBC about how these three guys in Puerto Rico when Trump was gallivanting around, can orange pill them and what it took. And I remember like the reason why I brought this to everybody's attention because there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that we'll never know. We'll never know about these things. We'll never know about, I mean, before it's too late. I mean, the different aspects that are happening with your favorite project, that's what go, what's going on behind business. So it's good when you take the curtain back to see what it takes to get people to that next level. And I linked this one in the description so you can read. It's pretty long. I just want you to read it just because it's entertaining. And they say, and there's two things they said. Turning Trump from a skeptic into a Bitcoin evangelist took the work behind closed doors of a small army of Bitcoiners, other crypto advocates who are able to maneuver their way into the candidate's inner circle. It's not about what you know, it's who you know. And this is, I think, what led Trump to go this route. Now, I'm not going to sit here and argue with everybody and say, well, he's a politician and a campaign promises and they're lies. True. I'm not going to deny that. Politicians are liars. We'll see if he does it. But here's the three people I'd like to give good credit to. Amanda, Amanda Fabiano, she, uh, chief of Bitcoin miners. Tracy Hoyos Lopez, a former California prosecutor. And David Bailey, CEO of media group Bitcoin Inc., also for Bitcoin Magazine. And he organized the... Uh, Bitcoin conference in Nashville. And just, it's a story of how these guys got together and said, how we're, we're gonna get access to, the, to uh, this inner group. How do we convince them to get onto Bitcoin? And they kind of finagled things and talked it out and just put their best foot forward. And that's what led to where we are now. And of course, whether you love or hate Trump, you can't deny one thing. If it wasn't for him talking about it, you can bet your bottom dollar, Kamala Harris wouldn't be talking about it. And actually, I'd like, I'd like to thank also Robert F. Kenny Jr. for talking about it first, but that's another story. And that's it for today. So look, there's a lot of information. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if they talk about it is time sensitive.